Rub up your engines! He says, I was looking for a performance tuner to the power and mile per gallon of my 2014 Honda Ridgeline. Stumbled upon a YouTube video that showed a guy tuning it up for a guy using these special reprogramming tools. What do you think of that? I think run away from that kind of stuff. Honda has excellent engineers. They design those things to have the absolute best power and best gas mileage combination. If you're going to go against those brilliant engineers by hooking up some half-baked power reprogrammer, you're insane. <laughs> One, you're going to be breaking emissions laws probably. It won't pass the state emissions test if you live in a state where they test that stuff. You're going against all what these engineers have done. Realize you can't get something for nothing. If you want to get more power, you're going to get worse gas mileage. You want to get better gas mileage, you're going to have worse power. The way that ridge line is set up, it's the best of both worlds for what it has. Don't mess with it. Leave it alone. It's fast enough and you start messing with that stuff, don't. It's not a smart thing to do. Like race car drivers, sure, their mechanics do that all the time because the only thing they care about is how fast they can go at high speeds. So they're always resetting everything depending on the humidity outside, the temperature, even the altitude they're racing at. But you're driving a car all over the place. Stick with what it has and be happy. Don't mess with that stuff. Black Word 30 says, Scott, is it safe to do an engine flush on modern engines, 2014 and newer? I only advise doing engine flushes. You buy a junk car or let's say you had a girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever, and they never changed the oil on their vehicle and it's full of sludge and crud, then get one of those flush things like K&W Black Flush, follow the directions in the court, and then change the oil and filter. Do not flush engine oil as a normal procedure to get dirt out. Guys say, oh, I'm going to keep my engine real clean. I'll flush it every time I change the oil. No, big mistake. There are a certain amount of buildup on piston rings and stuff that helps seal it. And if you get them whistle clean, sometimes they'll start burning oil. They'll have problems. You don't want to use flush in any engine unless it's crudded up. Just changing it normally is what you want to do. Modern oils are called detergent oils for a reason. The detergent keeps the dirt in suspension in the oil, so it doesn't make sludge. So as long as you change it regularly, all the dirt leaves when you change the oil. Do that. Don't make a habit of flushing them. That's a mistake. Otto Schroeder says, Scotty, I recently moved to America. I'm thinking of buying a very clean 2003 2.0 liter VW Golf. Yes, you just moved to America. Let's say you move from Europe. In Europe, Volkswagens are decent choices. There's billions of them there. The parts don't cost that much, and a lot of guys know how to work on them. Here in the United States, New, new, new. Uh, they're endless money pits. I don't know what it is, but they seem to send cheaper made Volkswagens to the United States. I guess a lot of them are made in Mexico and different places, and the European ones are made in Germany. Nobody really likes working on Volkswagens anymore in the United States. It's just specialists because they're so high tech and you need so many special tools. And so they generally just charge way too much for their repairs. Used to be Volkswagens were cheap to work on when they were air cooled, but when we went those water cooled ones, uh, in the United States, Every single customer in the last two decades of mine that have bought Volkswagens told me when they were done with them, I'll never buy another Volkswagen. I thought that was one of the worst cars I ever bought. So if I were you, I wouldn't buy it. Now, if you work on your own car and that Volkswagen you're looking at was made in Germany, eh, it could be okay. But if it wasn't and you don't work on it, Stay away in the United States from Volkswagens. Chris250 says, Scott, I want to know what year model pickup truck you recommend as a reliable daily driver that could go off-road if needed. It could be a V6 or a V8. With something like that, and you're kind of talking about going off-road, I would look at an all-wheel drive Tacoma. They're high enough up that you could go off-road, and you're saying if needed, but it would be a reliable daily driver. All-wheel drive. Now, if you don't want all-wheel drive, then I would say, ah, uh, just go with the uh, Tacoma with just the rear wheel drive. Uh, they're high enough up. You can get around and stuff. You say you want a reliable daily driver. If you go to Biggers and you're getting V8, you're going to get a lot worse gas mileage. Now, if you're towing a bunch of stuff, you're better with a V8, of course. But if you just want a daily reliable, I, I'd go with the Tacoma myself, especially if you don't need four wheel drive. And you're only going to go off-road if you have to somewhere and not going deep ruts and mud, the, the, the calm would be fine. Joshua F. says, Scotty, I recently replaced the spark plugs in my 15 Subaru Crosstrek with 122,000 miles due to misfire. After replacing it, it's not idling right. Always, always recheck your work area when you have a problem you didn't have before. Check all the vacuum lines, make sure none got broken. Check all the wiring, make sure it's connected tight that no sensors have been damaged or wires unplugged. And the other thing is, pray that the ignition coils didn't get damaged. All cars today have coil unplugged. There's ignition coil, 
assembly, 122,000 miles, just the fact of you unplugging that ignition coil assembly, then twisting it and pulling it off the spark plug and replacing the spark plug, sometimes it damages them. It wouldn't be running correctly, especially at low speeds if one or more were damaged. What you really want to do is get a scan tool, hook it up, check the misfire data. And if you see one particular cylinder has a misfire and the others don't, odds are that coil on plug assembly was bad. And to check that, you take it off of that, say it was number two misfiring, put that on number four, put number four on number two, and if the misfire moves, you know that coil's bad and replace that then. Pray it's something that easy. Cure Truck says, Scotty, I bought a 2016 Honda Civic LX. It was a previous corporate lease for 11 grand. It has 105,000 miles with a CVT transmission. I don't know if the flu has been changed. Should I change it? Yes, definitely change it. CVT transmissions are very complex, and since they haven't been out for decades and decades and decades and mass produced, especially by Honda, I would personally change it every 30 or 40,000 miles. You bought a three year old one that has 105,000 miles. That means most of it was highway driving, and that's equivalent to 10% city, so that's, that's probably like the equivalence of 20, 30,000 miles on it now. So just change it every 30, 40,000 miles of CVT fluid. Learn how to do it yourself. It's not that complicated. Use only the Honda CVT fluid. You can easily do it yourself. It's go make it last longer and it's not a hard thing to do just drain and fill it's an easy job to do do it yourself do it every 30 to 40,000 miles here's an end of an era not that it affects most of us but Lamborghini the exotic sports car company right now it sells more SUVs than it does supercars last year they have a SUV that's called a Urus I got a neighbor down the street that has one. Now, he is in a million and a half dollar townhome, so that kind of says it all. 60% of their sales last year were these Urus Lamborghini SUVs instead of their supercars. Now, even then, we're not talking about gigantic numbers. 4,962 of these Urus SUVs. So, they're not gigantic numbers, but I guess there's enough people out there that have enough money that want to be seen in a Lamborghini SUV and that obviously don't care about reliability, gas mileage, you know, million and billionaires out there that are going to buy these things, but it's kind of entertaining to me that now they're selling more SUVs than they do supercars. The image of, oh, I've got a Lamborghini isn't going to mean as much because it's, oh, you probably got one of those SUVs, you know, the supercar. <laughs> <laughs> Even they're watering their brand down. <laughs> Jim from Connecticut says, Scotty, I live in Connecticut. I want to buy my college grad daughter a safe, reliable, dependable all-wheel drive. What do you think of Subaru? Subaru now, they do make great four-wheel drive vehicles. The four-wheel drive systems are fantastic because every vehicle they make, at least recently, except for one, has all-wheel drive. Little sports car doesn't, but all the other ones have all-wheel drive. And they have a good all-wheel drive system. But I don't like Subarus because numero uno, their boxer engines are an old design and as they age they often blow head gaskets. They have horrible automatic transmissions, they're always breaking and now they're putting CVT transmissions and they break too. But if you did buy a brand new one for your daughter, I'm assuming you mean brand new, they cost a lot less than higher quality vehicles like a Toyota RAV4. If you compare the difference between the Subaru you're looking at and a Toyota RAV4 all wheel drive, I would always buy the Toyota, I wouldn't care about the price. But then again, I always buy used, I don't buy new. So the prices drop somewhat by that. But if you're happy, spend a little bit more for the Toyota RAV4 and the Subaru, get the Subaru. But if you want to save money and it's brand new, the Subaru can last for a while. It's not like it's going to fall apart like a Fiat or something. They're still decently built vehicles. Lance Mullen says, Scotty, just wondering what you think about GM products from 1986. Were they okay? I just bought an old 86. Pontiac. Yes, they were better back then. <laughs> I had some customers that had them for a long, long time, and they didn't have that many problems with them, especially those V6 engines. Those things could run forever if you kept the oil in them. I mean, they weren't bad vehicles. Now, no, you know, Pontiac went bankrupt. They're long gone. They don't make them anymore. They were much better built back then. That was long before GM went bankrupt to cut a lot of their quality control. They were better made back then. There's no arguing that. But modern ones, they yeah, see too many problems with them breaking down. Some right out of the box they don't work right I'd never waste the kind of money that they went for those things on a vehicle that isn't going to last that long of course you can get newer ones cheaper for sure they got horrible resale values but there's a reason behind it. those old 86s they're pretty well made so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell